Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on adding and subtracting algebraic fractions with integer denominators. Now let's just think how we usually add fractions. If I say had two thirds and I wanted to add four fifths, what would you do? Well, we need the denominators to be the same. And one way we could do it, to be quick about it, is we could multiply the denominators. So three times five is 15. And we could cross multiply the numerators. So the two gets multiplied by the five, which is 10. And then the plus in the middle, and then the four gets multiplied by the three. So four times three is 12. And now we can add these, and that would be 22 over 15. And that was a quick way of basically scaling each of the fractions so the denominators are the same. So the other way we could do it, the kind of long way, is just say, well, what's the lowest common multiple of 3 and 5? What's 15? So we make sure that each of the fractions are over 15. So to get from 3 to 15, we times that by 5. So 2 was multiplied by 5. And this 5 has become 15, which is times by 3. So the 4 times by 3, we get 12. And you can see this is effectively the same in this particular case. So let's do it with these ones. For A, if we can multiply together the denominators, we get 6. So we're going to get 6. And then we cross multiply the numerators. So this first numerator gets multiplied by the 3. So I'm going to actually write this using brackets. The 3 gets multiplied by the 3x plus 4. So 3 times 3x plus 4, rather than trying to do it all in one go. And then we add, so plus, and then this multiplication diagonally as well. So 2 times x minus 5. So if we then simplify that, so we just simplify this by expanding. We got 9x here. 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. And it's all over 6. And that is then equal to, well, 9x plus 2x is 11x, and 12 minus 10 is 2. So we get 11x plus 2 all over 6, and that's the final answer. Now, what about the second one? Now, we could avoid this kind of cross-multiplication method and use this kind of more traditional approach, because notice that the lowest common multiple of 2 and 4 is just 4. So I could just double the top and bottom here, so this would be over 4, and then I don't need to affect this fraction at all. But just for simplicity, I'm going to do it in the same way that I did it here. So I'm going to multiply the two denominators so that it's over 8. So 2 times 4 is 8, and then I'm going to cross multiply. So I do this times this, so 4 times 2y minus 5, using brackets, 4 times 2y minus 5, and then minus in the middle, and then the 2 gets multiplied by the 3y minus 3. So 2 times 3y minus 3. And then I'm going to expand out. Now the reason I've been really careful with not trying to just expand it out without using the brackets initially is because it's very easy to make a sign error when you're subtracting fractions. So we'll see that in a second. If we expand this out, 4 times 2y is 8y. 4 times minus 5 is minus 20. Minus 2 times 3y is negative 6y, and this is where it's so easy to get it wrong. Minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6. It's a very common student error to put minus 6 there. And then if we simplify, 8y minus 6y is 2y. Minus 20 plus 6 is minus 14, and it's all over 8. Now, notice we could divide top and bottom of this fraction by 2 to simplify, because we can simplify fractions by dividing top and bottom by the same number. So if we divide this by 2, we just get y minus 7. Divide the bottom by 2, we get 4. And you would have avoided having to divide by 2 if you'd avoided this cross-multiplication method and you'd just multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 2 first to make sure these are both over 4.